what was promised to them in their treaties. There's so much to go through to figure out everything that's gone on. I just don't bother. Mm -hmm. I don't care anymore. All I can do is I can say that I'm here, I exist, and I have the right to life and to my share of, uh, of, of the commonwealth of whatever's going on around me. Excellent. Now, uh, I have a friend who is uh, Indian, uh, Kami Kakanu. Uh, did I say that right? Kami Kakanu, I think so. Anyway, he's asking, would you agree that uh, treaties 1 through 10 are treaties? I don't even know what those you are. Know, yeah, no, me neither. No, I know, uh, <laughs> but it was I, I, know I read asked. the, what is it, the Royal Proclamation back in the day that, that was to do with all the Indians and the gifting of all the land that was uh, west of Ontario. And I think it was 1863 or something like that, the Royal Proclamation of 1863. I read that one once upon a time back in the day. And just from reading that, you can tell damn well that nothing was ever lived up to. Nothing. Right, obvious. Well, yeah, obviously, definitely. Um, he's he's basically saying it's a trap. Okay, so I also have another question from somebody in the chat who wanted to understand things as, um, as simple as, say, marijuana possession and stuff like that and how this can work for or against you within the sovereign issue, within the sovereign issue, how to get around that. Do you have any like, like advice a crim- to like that? Like crim- a criminal charge for possession? Yeah, you or mean, being like for- caught with it right... Okay. Yeah, we're being um, caught with it right there and then. Okay, once you understand what's going on and you realize that criminal code violations, okay, number one, for any, for any, what, the, the, the criminal code of Canada, now if we're talking about Canada, I can't get into American stuff, even though it's basically the same thing. The, the, the criminal code of Canada is a measuring stick of how much offenses basically cost you if you commit one. But nothing in the criminal code of Canada is enforceable unless it's under an act. That's why you're charged under the Highway Traffic Act, or you're charged under this act, or you're charged under that act, and I think I covered that in one of the videos. So if it's not in an actual act, it has no force and effect, number one. You can't just be charged with something in the Criminal Code of Canada, period. Number two, all you have to do is read through the Charter and Rights and Freedoms, and you'll understand real quick that, number one, the Charter and Rights and Freedoms is the, is the supreme law of what's called Canada, this organization that's coming against you. It's the supreme law. It also goes on to state that it only applies to agents of the government. Therefore, how could anything under that act, anything anything subordinate to that act, any subservient act, period, ever apply to something that's not an agent of the government? Marijuana possession, the charge they're coming after you with is a charge from their code book. It's like uh, if you work for Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola says while you're on duty at Coca-Cola, you are not to be drinking at your desk. Okay, not a problem. Well, I guess you only have to worry about that while you're working for Coca-Cola and while you're at your desk. Once you understand that, you'll understand, okay, well, what relevancy does does the pocket criminal code charge against marijuana have on me? People have to start understanding who these statutes apply to. I'm not going to call them laws. They're not laws. Now, the only way an act can be binding on you is if you've contracted with the government through that act... And even then, um, I think I talk about in, in one of my videos there, about even though you may have a driver's license, when does that apply to you? Just because I have a license to operate in a capacity, does that mean I'm, o- I'm, I'm always operating that capacity? It's like if you got a job at McDonald's. Okay, you're hired. Here you go, sign this, you got a job. And then you never were scheduled for one shift, ever. Well, that's great. I've got a license to do something, but have I ever actually done it? Yeah. The license, the driver's license, is to carry on commerce as a function of government. Basically means you can be a government agent and conduct their commerce. You're licensed to do that. Does that mean that's what you're doing on the roads all the time? No. Yeah, because nobody has any clue about anything like that, though. Of course not. It's all... But you're not rebutting any of their presumptions because we have no idea what's going on. We were we were also educated in their school system. If you look at their school system, uh, everything is the healthcare system. Everything that's going on, I- every single one of them fill the planks of the communist manifesto. Nobody ever realizes they're living in a communist nation until it collapses, and then afterwards they go, "Holy shit, we were communist." <laughs> a lot of us are figuring it out now. <laughs> yeah, the Russians, the Russians <laughs> didn't realize awful. that they used to live in a communist nation until after communism fell. And they went, holy shit, we were communist? Wow. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's where now, we're at. I have a... I have a small, we're, we're going to go back to, say, the religious aspect of it for a second, because if you'll find that any, anywhere in, in, a, um, in a court system, you're going to find the Bible alongside absolutely everything. Yep. Now, from what I understand, and I, I'm not a feminist, and I think anybody that knows me knows that I am the farthest thing from a feminist, although I do like to, um, no, I am equal. And I will state that point until my dying day. I am as equal to you. You are no better than I am because you have a penis swinging between your legs. Um, but if you look to the Bible and you look to the court system and whatnot, the woman is lesser. And there was a sovereign. I have a link for it. I'll just have to grab it. But uh, there was a sovereign who got away from murdering his wife because of this. That he used God's law. Hold on a second. He used yeah. God's law to harm a woman and thought using his rights to abuse women as the Bible so awfully says that a man can do to a woman. And that, I mean, it's parts like this that I'm, that stuff worries me. I'd, and I'd like to know, say, where you stand on that. Okay. What your um, thoughts are about equality and stuff. And I'm not trying to get you into a big, you know, gender thing. I'm really not. But the, I know that there's other women out there that are going, wait a minute, free man. And, and it, not from a feminist point of view, but from an equal point of view. Yeah. Actually, give me, give me two seconds and I'm going to answer that. One second here. Perfect. All right. Just to let everybody know, uh, we have a new show starting on uh, freethinkradio.com. Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, negative 5, and minus yeah, 5 GMT in Europe, um, or yeah, GMT, sorry. Uh, we have l Through the Looking Glass with my husband, John Miller, and my good friend, Bruce Fenton. And uh, that starts, as I said, uh, today, and I think it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I hope to see you all there to listen in on that show. It should be fantastic. Um, again, the lineup is on the lineup. If you look at the uh, screen at the top where the header is, you'll find the schedule, the show, the station schedule there. We have some fantastic shows on the station. Actually, they're all fantastic, and I'm not just saying that because I'm one of them. But no, they are. They're all good shows. Everybody's going to get a little, little bit of something out of all the shows there. And welcome back, Dean. Hello. Okay, so I'll address that based on the fact that I know nothing to do with this court case. And I'll tell you that what I would take away from that is uh, the same thing as the O.J. Simpson trial. Is the arguments that were probably made by the guy who killed his wife were made in a court scenario where the state was bringing the charges and the claims against the man. The state cannot okay. be an injured party. So as soon as he started bringing the Bible into the, into the courtroom... He took the state's ability to convict him away from them. But that doesn't mean he's free of guilt or he's free from liability. What that means is the family of the woman that was harmed or killed has to bring the claim against him. Just because the state okay. can't bring the charges anymore, which the state, can, the state should never, ever be bringing charges against somebody. They have no standing. They're not an injured party. Oh. Right, and that's the same thing with OJ. He right. got away with murder for the criminal charges. Did that did that save him in the civil side? No, no, no. He lost everything. He was still guilty over there, just because the state couldn't prosecute, doesn't didn't remove him from liability of his actions. Right. So people are probably right. going to mis mistakenly believe that that's because the Bible said he could kill his wife. I really doubt the Bible says he can kill his wife. Well, no, it's not that. It's about the idea of a uh, woman being subordinate under man. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's my concern because, I mean, it's not that I want to get my back up, but, I mean, between what we live in right now, feminism is destroying femin femininity, and the Bible's destroying the equality. It, this is just from my perspective. I know people share my thoughts. <clears throat> How do you regard the idea of man and woman? Uh, now, I'm asking, that's, well, I know it's a personal thing, but I'm curious. Yeah, well... Obviously, obviously equals. I don't even think, uh, I think that any, any illusion of subordinacy probably comes from references in the Bible where, where it maintains the idea that basically it's up to the husband to defend the wife. That's why they have lesser standing when it comes to court matters and accusations and all that kind of stuff, right? Where, well, because not just that, the fact that everything that we endure is punishment from our menstruation cycle to our childbearing. That, that that's that's some type of punishment. We're, I mean, it's right from Genesis we're shown as being lesser. 
and and almost on the evil side of things. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I, I got a friend who knows a lot more about that, and he's explained to me the stance in the Bible to do with that, to do with the original sin in the whole nine yards, and I just really, I, I couldn't comment on that even if I wanted to. And he, That's he, cool. I just yeah, wanted they, to throw it out there because I knew it was a question that some people wanted answered, and I... I was curious, so yeah, thank you the, for at least you know making the attempt. Yeah, no, I do, I do know something about that. Not enough that I could actually speak about it, though, and that's to do with yeah, the garden, uh, the the garden, and the uh, the original sin in the whole nine yards, and uh, and what happened there. I know somebody that could sit down and explain that to you ad nauseum for eight hours, um, but I wouldn't want to bore anybody with that. <laughs> right, right, no, that's good. I, See, and you know, I admire the fact that you can sit there and say, I'm not even going to begin to touch on that because I know a little bit, but not enough. See, when Dean knows what he's talking about, he doesn't stop talking. And that, that shows strength of character right there as far, and I don't mean to tote you, but I mean, seriously, that's huge strength of character, and I appreciate that in an, in, an individual. Um, let's see, where do we want to go from here? Where do you want to go from here? Where, what would you like to conquer next? Um, I'm not too sure. I, I would say that, like, to do with the man and woman stuff, though, I'll just make one more brief topic on that. Is uh, is I do think it is the place of uh, of the man, though, because uh, I mean, I hate to say it, we do have gender roles. Men are just usually more physically strong and more physically strong of character than than, than a lot of women out there. And I do think mm -hmm. it is one of our roles, and that's why when you when you when you're uh, and I don't say ma marriage because marriage is is a corporate term, but uh, you know when you're when you're joined in matrimony. And you become your wife, and your wife becomes you. You one are you are one and the same. You're inseparable. I, I do think it is our place that when uh, if, if something was ever brought against our, our 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 wife, that we are the ones to stand up and say, "Hey, no, no, you talk to me. Yeah, you have a problem. You talk to me. It is my place to deal with these kind of matters." And I'm really well, okay. With, I don't think that's sexist or demeaning to women. I just think that's because we have uh, more capacity to, to to deal with these kind of issues. Maybe. I mean, in a physical I don't know. way, back in the day. In a physical, physical way, yeah, probably, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I'm an outspoken woman, so I usually take care of my own, and then John goes, why don't they ever attack you when I'm around? <laughs> because See, they know exactly, you'd kill yeah, them. Exactly. You'd kill them. <laughs> that's I mean, why. Uh, equality uh, of mind aside, how many women uh, hold the belt in the UFC? We're just physically yeah. stronger. I mean, that's just that's not even sexist. That's just well, obviously we're bigger and we're powerful and we're more intimidating. Usually, yeah, no, definitely. And I don't have any desire to look like somebody like say China. I yeah. have no desire to change my body <laughs> to be that. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, now I have someone in the chat and uh, on a private message saying that it's about territorial rights taken away from the feminine through the dominion of man, which is pure international law. I don't know if you want to touch that at all. Um, I don't know. I, I do know that basically any idea that women are subservient to men is more so Catholicism than anything else. Yeah. Okay. So, well, well, moving I, along. Yeah, and then moving you move along. along on any, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, we, we, we can move along on that. I don't have many comments to make on that kind of stuff. No, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad any, that you... Any man or it. any woman who learns his rights can walk into court and can hand them their asses. And it's that's what you're most do. concerned with. Absolutely. It's got nothing to do with who I think to be the lesser sex or anything, because I don't think there is a lesser sex. But uh, if you know your rights, um, society exists in a civilized manner today. We have these courts to deal with these matters in a civilized manner where you can walk in where you're supposed to be free from intimidation to speak your mind and enforce your rights. So anybody that knows their rights can enforce them, period. Yeah, definitely, and 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 that and that's very admirable, and I thank you, and I and I I do apologize if you feel I backed you into a corner that wasn't the intention, but Absolutely it was just something not. that needed to be something that needed to be touched on. Now, as far as well, let's see, parental rights. Let's talk about that because a lot of people, I know myself, I was one of them. They're scared to death to turn around and do anything because they're afraid that they're going to have their children taken away. So. What do you have to say on that? Um, yeah, that is the uh, that's in the writings of uh, Francis Bacon, actually, of marriage and children. That's one of the things you got to be worried about is when you have a wife and you have children. That gives uh, bargaining chips to your enemies, right? So that's uh, when when they can't deal with you. That's the next recourse. Okay, well, uh, this guy we can't deal with this guy, so let's threaten his kids. And I don't think yeah. there's a more callous and shallow act on this planet than than going after someone's children because. You, you're not man enough to face them. Um, and I'm just going to call that out point blank for what it is. That's exactly what government does. That's what child family services is. If they don't like you, it's going to be politically motivated, and they're going to come and steal your children as punishment. 
that's all that is. The the, the 